Okay, just doing a quick chilly update. This is where my chilies start off in this greenhouse. Um, this year again I'm doing about 330 chilies and about 12 different types of chili. They start off in these these trays here and are heated through this cable. I've got it running like that as you can see. Um, the cable that I got was warm enough to germinate uh, seeds even in, in the early months of uh, January. I've got this bubble wrap all around the um, greenhouse because I tried to overwinter some chilies from last year's, last seasons. Also used these heating elements here as well. And it did the job. As in, it was quite warm in here. Although it was a bit of a failure on overwintering the chilies. But I think I, I started to overwinter them a bit too late. Anyway, so they get transferred from these trays so then over here, and then when they get big enough, they go to somewhere else. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, got some butternut squash down there. Loads of butternut squash. And some sweet corn. Now all my sweet corns were planted at the same time, apart from those two there that were given to me by my neighbour, parents-in-law. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you about why I plant them at the same time because I've kind of had them in three different areas. Uh, I've had a set in here, I've had a set out on the garden and a set in the polytunnel. And you should see the difference of the sweet corn as I take you round on the tour. Okay, so we'll come out of here. Then come to greenhouse number three, um, where we have tomato plants. There's four different types of tomato plants here. I think they're Roma, Money Makers, and Cherry, and I forgot the other one, what it's called. But they're coming up nicely. Back here, uh, some aubergines that I planted from seed. It's a bit hard to see into the bags because of the light and whatnot and the darkness of the bags. But I've got about 30 aubergine plants. Some in there. Some down there. Some more butternut squash there. And then some swede in there, about 20 swedes plants in there, which I bought. Not that you can see it, but raspberry canes. And blackberry. Just gonna quickly take you back this way a second, sorry, just to show you that this is the evergreen house, which I used as a like an overspill of my chilies from last year. Uh, it needs a big clean out. That's where, where I store my water at the moment um, to keep it nice and warm. Okay, moving on. So, I used to grow a lot of veg years ago and I kind of stopped. But uh, I thought this year I'd start again. So we've got some broad beans, love broad bean. The only issue with broad beans is that they attract black fly and once you've got them they're very hard to uh, to get off. It's, to me it's like, is it worth um, dealing with? But I've got this, net, I've got some netting now, some uh, micro netting which nothing can get through apart from rain and light. So that should help keep the black flies off. Got some uh, Barlotto beans. I think they're Italian. 
if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. And some dwarf beans. Which they are growing, but they seem to be struggling. The leaves seem to be a bit, a little bit droopy. I don't know if they're supposed to be like that. It's the first time I'm growing them. I'm, I'm watering them plenty. I haven't given them any kind of feed. Uh, I might have to look into that to see if they do need feed. I wouldn't have thought they did, but if they do, please somebody can tell me. And then some broccoli. Never grown broccoli before. Actually, no, I did one year, but it came out crap. So I'll try again. And then some cauliflower. Again, use, use the netting for these two to keep off the um, butterflies. Stop them from laying their eggs and producing caterpillars, which then eat the cauliflower. Here we have Brussels sprouts. Very early days. I've got about 25 uh, Brussels sprout plants. Here in this cage thing, we have sugar snap peas. Hopefully they'll be all right. They look kind of all right, but you can't really see it because of the light. Okay, sugar snap peas. I uh, told you about the sweet corn. This is the other portion of sweet corn that I planted out about a month ago. And we've had, if we've had like, I think one frost since I planted them out. And, but we've had probably at least seven days worth of very cold weather. And so they are worse for wear. These were, at the time, the biggest of the lot that I planted out. But they've more or less kind of stopped growing due to cold. But they, some may survive, but I think half of them will probably die. And opposite we have runner beans. I still need to finish off the the securing points so that they can intertwine and, and run up run up the uh, bits and bobs. I'll probably do that on Friday, which is in two days' time. Uh, in this bit of land, which is hard to see because I've been strimming the, the grass, um, I'll probably put my. But not squash in there, so I was thinking what I was going to do. Then there's a trench that runs along the back. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in there. I've got onions to put in as well. Got some potatoes in here from last year um, that cover about a third of this bit. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to fill the rest of the space up with. This portion here, this bit here is... is there's nothing in there whatsoever, this bit. However, running down here, just stand over it, I have got carrots, and I have got 
So I've got purple carrots, Amsterdam carrot, uh, Autumn K carrots. And as you can see, the potatoes again from some point. I don't think I've ever personally planted potatoes over here, but they are growing somehow. Parsnip. Not so, yeah, parsnip, sorry, yeah. And then the last row, last three rows is beetroot. Which are coming up quite nicely. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I found some um, garlic in the shed that we must have grown from years ago and they looked a bit too dry so I thought let me plant and see what happens and very very quickly they began to grow. These weeding really around here. Um, so they're coming up quite nicely. Also I for some reason I planted some carrots in a tray and then I transplanted them and only three three there but they look quite healthy so I'm very happy with those okay next to the polytunnel the strawberries from a couple of years ago let's keep growing growing in fact my daughter's uh, planted those Another one there. But I've not done anything to these whatsoever, I've just left them and those who know about the strawberries, they just keep them coming and coming, I guess. Okay, in the polytunnel, the other, the other greenhouse, the one with the other sweet corns in it, the temperature was 25, no, 30 in there. 30 degrees and in here I can feel it straight away it's so much hotter. Okay, where are we? Where are we? So that's uh, 40. forty-one it's so much hotter in there, it's just so these are my other sweet corns. I don't know if you can remember this the thickness of the the first ones I showed you, but these are certainly thicker, but they are in deeper soil. So maybe that's the, the issue. Not maybe, that is the issue. I don't think it's the heat difference. And they've started to um, do the flowering thing. You can't really see it from the camera. Okay, so here are these are the, the biggest chili plants I've got at the moment. I'm actually growing about 40, I don't know what to call them really, but they're basically called seasoning peppers. And they're from the Caribbean, from Grenada, these ones are. And I'm growing them this year. There's one at the back there. Now these seasoning peppers, they look just like chilies. They look like, they're kind of like ghost chilies, I guess. Uh, don't taste like ghost chilies at all. But when you when you look at it, it looks like a chili. When you start to chew on it, it tastes like it's going to be a uh, chili. Uh, it tastes like it's going to be really, really hot. And actual fact, there's no heat whatsoever. So it's just a seasoning pepper, just to season your food. Uh, but it's got no heat whatsoever, which is I quite like. It's got all the nice flavours, just no heat. So, though I've got all my chilies just down one side at the moment and just on one level, by the time I get those others in here, they will certainly feel, I don't know, a third of this greenhouse. 
and then obviously as they start growing and I start repotting it will fill the, the rest of this greenhouse and I'll probably have to use my overspill greenhouses to accommodate the rest of the chilies. Okay. So coming over here, these are my attempted overwintered chilies, chili plants rather. Um, out of let's say 40 that I tried to overwinter, I must have got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about 15 uh, overwintered chili plants that actually made it through to this season. Right, I'm now starting to sweat in here, it's getting hot, so I'm going to speed up, it's too hot. Wow. So in here I've got um, scotch bonnets and ghosts, I think they're the only ones that have wintered. Sorry, I just have to wipe my brow there because it's getting very hot. Uh, this, this one here, about a month ago it started to flower however there's no really uh, pollinators getting in here at the moment because the doors aren't really i've got two sets of doors and they're both not open so they probably won't be pollinated unless i do it by hand which i think i'll just leave it and let it you know let it do its thing right oh just one more thing before i get out of here all right, wipe my brow again, it's so hot. Because I've got a uh, grapevine. And I bought this um, last year when my daughter bought it. And uh, last year I only got two bunches of grapes off, off, off each. This year, however, there is, uh, at a rough guess, probably 20 at least 20 at least 20 bunches of grapes on each uh grapevine i've got two grapevines there so it'd be nice to see how they all pan out i don't know if you can see it there again it's so bright it's quite hard to see right i've got to get out of it it's too hot I should rent this place up for um, people to sunbathe. It's flipping boiling. I went to Morocco last year and it wasn't as hot as that over there. Wow, okay. Right, thank you very much for uh, watching. If you're happy with the, th with the stuff I've shown you, uh, please like my, my video. Also, subscribe if you want to see more, if you want to see further updates on, on the stuff that I've been growing. And also share if you feel that someone else might benefit from what I'm showing. Okay, thank you very much for watching.